All right, this is the meeting of the Cold Spring Zoning Board of Appeals. This is a five member board, four members are here, so we have a quorum. I'm Eric Worth, the chair. Um, why don't you let's say your name, starting with Marianne. I'm Marianne Remy. John Martin. Jesse St. Charles. All right. First item on the agenda is a workshop for 14 Constitution Drive. Are you Mr. Scarpa? I am, yes. Would you like to come up and sit at the head of the table? And... Oh. All right. Now, at a workshop, we don't get into the merits of the application. We don't make yes. any, don't make any decisions or um, it, it, we're just trying to get your application in final state mm -hmm. so it's ready for the public to respond to and um, make sure that all the applicable rules of zoning are understood. Mm -hmm. or, um, so um, let's start, if you would just give us a brief summary of, of your project, not, you know, not the whole presentation, but just enough so we can help us orient ourselves in the application. Sure. Um... Well, thanks for uh, meeting me tonight. Um, so what we're really trying to accomplish uh, with this application um, and going forward with a potential addition on the house is to add approximately 450 square feet um, of a livable area on the, the first floor, um, which is, you know, we have a, a small basement um, below, but, um, and into the backyard along the, the, the west side um, next to, uh, you know, adjoining property. Uh, what that would do is allow us to add a uh, net one bedroom um, and expand out our bathroom. So we'd be going from three bedroom, uh, one bath to four bedroom, one bath. All right. So we have a, a, a nice site plan here, page mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. showing the, the new area in green. Mm -hmm. New new addition in green, brown is existing. Mm -hmm. Setbacks are marked. Mm -hmm. We have a referral from the building inspector. Where's the referral? That's on top there. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you that familiar with the neighborhood down there on Constitution? How long have you been there? I am um, about three years. Three years. A little over three years, yeah. So um gotten to meet a lot of the neighbors around there. Very, very nice. Very nice neighborhood. A lot of yeah, well, small yeah. children. It's great. Yeah. Are you on the uh the west side or east side of Constitution? Um it's the side opposite the not nah, with the river in the background. I have the um Kemble Ave behind us. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So there really is no development behind you other than Correct. the field back room. Yes. And uh, in your understanding is um, it's sort of the project that you're looking at somewhat similar to some of the, the construction around you from your estimation? Um, there are, so there are probably, I would say about like eight or so houses that are very, like that are Pretty much the same footprint, same um, you know, style as this house. Is, the, is your current footprint or is our current? Yes. Current. Um, or, or I guess uh, I just said the base, like the how the house was built, mm -hmm. and there have been um, you know, obviously before we we moved in, uh, but walking up and down the street, we can see that there have been some different sort of uh, variations to you know, slight additions, building out that porch. Um, I, I believe there's at least one or two that have like a similar kind of a build out in the back. I don't know how how large mm -hmm. um scale, but there there have been and these houses built in the fifties. Um you know I they do now kind of look a little bit different, but there's been some alterations. So there's a full basement probably down below? Uh yes, it's a it's a full basement, but it's not considered like livable space. It's uh I don't know six and a half feet. Probably a so um but there is a, a finished basement. So and and the additional would likely um 
end up in a removal of the sun. Um, yes. The, yeah, it would. Yes. Yeah. Sun room, or it appears to be a sun room or a greenhouse. Or it is. It's, it's a sun. But it looks nice, but in the winter, in the summertime, it's very, very hot. There's no location there. Yeah. 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 You need a tree in front of it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I believe there was a tree. Especially, in, the especially in the morning. Yes. Um, have you discussed uh, this project with any of the neighbors? Yes. Are they familiar with it? Yes. Yeah, the um, uh, the neighbors directly adjacent, that would be, uh, you know, the, the property line that's closest to where we were working. They actually recommended the uh, architect. Um, we talked about it with them. Uh, we talked about it with the neighbors directly across the street from us. Um, and potentially the neighbors are uh, you know, on the um, but I don't know if we want to go out of the show with them. Yeah. Certainly the neighbor adjoining where the um, the addition we built. And let's see. But is there any fencing on your property line at this point? There is. Yeah, there's fencing right on that on that line. And what is the height of that? Six feet. And does that go right up to the uh, driveway? The six foot or yes, it goes um Right up to, yeah, essentially right up to the driveway, and then there's just shrubbery on that side, on the front yard. And that was erected, I believe, in 2020. Looks to me that the um, the zoning um, provision that is at issue here is 134-19G, um, as in Gary. It says, non-conforming buildings and that's what this one is. It's a pre-exists the zoning code and it does not conform the, the current structure, but it's grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. Non-conforming buildings may be enlarged, provided that such action does not increase the width of any part of the building located in a required yard. So um, it's a non-conforming building, it's being enlarged, but the enlargement um, increases the width of a part in a required yard, and that is the side yard, the um, bulk of the building in the that is located actually in the yard is being in increased in width. So that's the um, that's the variance at issue here. We're being asked to make an exception for on that um, on, to that particular provision. Um, there is one other question um, that I think um, that you should clear up for us at the hearing. Mm -hmm. um, the drawing shows a new Bilco door that extends um, just a little bit beyond the rear setback line, mm -hmm. like about one or two feet. Okay. And the zoning code says that no, there may be no structure is permitted within the setback area or the yard. And so, um, but structure is defined as being 18 inches or higher, uh, something that's 18 inches or higher. And if, if this Bilco door is typical. Um, that last foot or two is undoubtedly less than 18 inches. So if you could just confirm that for us, that will eliminate the, any problem with building in the rear yard. Yeah, and that access is the basement, I imagine, right? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm one of those slanted doors, that, like a hurricane door. And it goes down. It goes down into yeah. the basement. Right, yeah. It leads to the basement. It's got those two big doors that pull up. It's a very it basically ceases to be a structure as soon as it hits the 18 inch yeah. mark above the ground. <laughs> and and, and currently it. it's not there. It's currently it's not there. When it's part of the yeah. green addition yeah. here, it will be added and it's shown as extending into the rear yard. So and, and to the side set yard set mm. as well, yeah. But yes. Well all together in the side that, yard. That that will will be included in the other consideration, mm -hmm. but just about the side yard, but just to eliminate the rear yard. If you could confirm for us, maybe if you could get a little drawing showing like from a side view of the Bilco door where the rear yard line is, oh. what the height at that point is, just to reassure us that it's not going to be over 18 inches in the rear. In the rear right. Yard. Photographs mean everything. So, you know, try to pretend we're not there and that you come in with, uh, you, you, you don't necessarily have to have photographs for everybody. You could just have a template that we pass around mm -hmm. so we can see what things will look like. Okay. Yeah, that's a good a good point. That's it's not a requirement. It's not mandatory, but um, 
but for us to look at it and understand what, what's happening without showing up on your property. Uh, okay. It's okay. pretty important. And uh, just give us, uh, you know, maybe take a, a photograph or two of the, the most immediate neighbors, you know, what their backyard might look like, you know, to just if we're supposed to look at an element of the character of the neighborhood. Okay. And I, I didn't look at this uh, entirely. I missed it, but uh, how about area uh, coverage? Is well, that there, it's okay. It's 27. It's proposed as 27, and it, it has to be under 30. Okay. Yeah. That, is that, it looks like that's on the, is that here on the drawing? I was looking for the oh. chart. Um, Performance. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, so on the second page at the bottom. Right. Proposed is 27.9. So the requirement is 30. So we're good there. Yeah. Got it. Um, related to the understanding of the, um, the bill code door, it seems like we've got elevations that could include the detail of the bill code door, but don't. I think that would maybe um, provide some clarity about what we're talking about in terms of height mm -hmm. and, and projection into the backyard. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of hinted at here, but um, even if we just had uh, some proposal on the actual height and uh, oh, a statement as to the height of the bill code. Well, like like we have we have numbers for a lot of. For a lot of the points on this, yeah, but there, uh, but the, the fact that there is a, uh, a code requirement to be under eighteen inches, yes, and it should be reflected somewhere in there, yeah. so that somebody looking at this, yeah, can find that information, yeah, right. and to say, oh, you know, the board overlooked that; it's not there, and that's just at the rear, only, the only because, it's not yeah, that yeah. Long. and only it's like only because long. it's in the setback yeah. that it's important, yeah. Yeah. right, yeah. and so that information really should be in there. Um, Maybe also worth. Uh, By the way, where do you want that mentioned? Well, I, if it could be, I mean, I don't want to have to necessarily do a whole new elevation. If it could be easily included in in this existing elevation, that would be great. Otherwise, a a new rough sketch yeah, of just a simple, yeah. a simple little sketch. Yeah, it's like it really was conveying to what it, it actually it could just be verbal. Um, well, let's make it part of the record by you know he doesn't have well, to I mean, make in a, written, a, a ton a ton of copies you can just have one copy that gets included with the, the you know the whole yeah. record we just it's really one date piece of data what is the height there mm -hmm. at the at the point of the rear setback line okay i think i could yeah i think this should be a little slide that for you yeah. back out yeah we're just yeah. supposed to cover these bases and that's all and it's, it doesn't have to be a copy for everybody like i said it's just one copy and, and it gets included i think it would be good to be prepared to discuss um, the need for the Bilko door location where it is, considering it is in both um, setback and there'll be a part of it that is actually an, an additional bit of, uh, it'll be in the side setback that is above the 18 because it presumably has a top part that goes up, you know, mm -hmm. up further. So um, the, what the, what the motivation was for that design choice about putting it where it is versus shifting it over. Right, because where there's a reasonable option to do it otherwise to get out of a setback area, you have to explain why you opted for this where it could still go into a non-setback area. So, you know, those things are looked at. You know where you have options so it, it's night i mean everybody would think uh, you know the internal setup of your house and how it would be designed what the flow would be and everything uh we're we're just simply looking at trying to find um to accomplish your plan with the least amount of variances needed sure i understand yeah i believe the bill call was added late um 
in the configuration mm -hmm. for design. Yeah. And if I had to guess, and I'll, I'll, I'll get more, I guess I'll, I'll go back to the architecture of the plans. Um, I would assume it was the way region was put where it was. It's just, it's furthest out of the way. Yeah. Um, from the you know the rest of the backyard. Yeah. I don't see where where is uh, it indicated what now the new length of the uh, what I if if you're saying it's on the uh, the east side of Constitution Drive, it'll be the north wall of your property for mm -hmm. the structure. What is the length of that? Do you anticipate? I mean, I, I, I can't really see oh, you mean the new projection. Well, the, the, how, you know, going east to west. Yeah. What is how, how deep the, the build is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's in the, um, yeah. I'm just wondering, because it's not on here. So I'm wondering if I'm missing it. Yeah, I think it's got more detail. Yeah. It's, uh, it's eight, it's 18, 18 feet, I believe. Okay. A1. Plan A1 is the new first floor. Okay. And it's got wall length. Yeah. Right. So what, what's interesting about this, you're staying at one level, right? Yes. Okay. And, you know, someday down the line, somebody might come in and say, well, I want to build everything to a second floor, which might become a little more problematic because it would tend to really throw a shadow over the next property because the sun would be really to your south yeah. pretty much throughout much of the year. Mm -hmm. and, and you're building right up to the line. You're building, what is it, a foot off? Or yeah, not, it's one foot, I think. Yeah. So, you know, things like that are taken into consideration. And then, again, this is all hypothetical, but mm -hmm. the next person might come in and just say, it is great house, great footprint, we're going up. <laughs> and the fact that it's built so close that mm -hmm. that it's a bulk issue, really. I mean, what, what do you understand? I mean, you were working on the code. Right? Um, well, that would be uh, i'm not overly concerned with um what a future owner might do or a future board well, we're not going to be concerned about it necessarily but i'm saying hypothetically i'm just thinking um well that would also require a variance it, it, yeah if, that's what i'm if saying it goes ahead with a one-story addition and someone later wants a second that's all that's part of, covered by that same provision which says it says not only width but height yes okay good I just wanted it's sort of an education to yeah, some yeah. people who haven't been on the board, yeah, to know that, yeah, because I'm familiar with it, but I'm yeah. just sort of mm -hmm. trying to yeah, throw it in people's heads. We've, not, we've dealt with this before. Wanted to add um, one thing to your application. Um, as you know, you, you're going to be sending um, uh, notices of the public hearing to your neighbors and you have a list in your application form there's two two names that i believe should be added um and, and how about the owner of the of the uh that's one of them of okay. marathon yeah yeah so one of them is the, the big lot behind you the marathon property you, okay. you do have to include them because they are a, they are adjoining adjoining neighbor. okay and that's Kearney property, and you can get the mailing address from the village clerk or from the Putnam County e parcel site, which is um, county county uh, real estate office has an online database that gives information about every property. It's called e parcel, um, but the village clerk also can give you that. And the second one is right across the street from you at Eleven Constitution. Heidi and Michael Bender. Yes. They're really, they're direct, they are directly across, well, not directly, but they are across from you. And it, be prudent to include them as well. Okay. And the sign. Yes. And then in addition to mailing um, the notices to neighbors, you'll need to post a sign in front, in front, uh, visible from the street, plainly visible. You get that from the village clerk. That has to go up at least 10 days before the hearing, and the mailings have to be postmarked at least 10 days before. I'll send you a, an email message in the next day or two with exact details about the mailing. 
I know okay. how to do it and what. It, I'll include um, a PDF of the of the notice itself, mm -hmm. so that you just re get copies made of that mm -hmm. and, and, and simply mail that. That's all you mail. Okay. You mail. And you'll do an affidavit as to how long the sign's been out in front when it was posted. Yeah, so on the day of the hearing, there's an affidavit form that's in the application that you just need to complete the sign. It just says that you're just attesting that the sign was up from X date until the date of the hearing. Okay. And you said the sign I can get from the village clerk? Correct. Okay. Um, the soonest we could have a hearing and, and qualify for the deadlines is uh, four weeks from now. And that means, um, let's see, today's the 19th. So that would be November 2nd. Or sorry, no, that's the next meeting. It's the meeting after that, um, the third Thursday. So that's the 16th. November 16th at seven. Would you be available then? Yes. Uh, we, um, I sometimes travel for it, but I, I know it's for five of these there. Okay. Yeah. On the 16th. November 16th. Okay. How about other the board members are yeah, I'm gonna put it for I'll be available. I'm I'm gonna miss the next board meeting, but I'll be available mm -hmm. after. Um so is it possible to join by Zoom if if you have an extraordinary there have to be extraordinary circumstances, like not routine, not predictable. Right. Oh. Like an emergency, family illness. Oh. Um, you were asking hypothetically in case something came up. No, I'm okay. not. Okay. I think one day they're going to get used to the fact that Zoom is really helpful, except for the fact that uh, due process sort of requires in, in, in person. Yeah. But eventually, I think they're, things are going to be good enough to, to be able to get beyond that. Because they've done a lot of uh, uh, testimonies and depositions and whatnot to Zoom, and you know when somebody's accusing you of something and they're doing it over Zoom, well, it's a lot less. Didn't they used to be really weird about signatures by fax, like yeah. you couldn't fax a signature, and yeah. now it's like you can click on something in email and it counts as a signature. Right. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, there was <laughs> one other thing. Why can I? Oh, uh, environmental, uh, you know, let's go through the five criteria in our head to see what we need, you know, from that. And the idea is you're displacing more natural ground mm -hmm. where water would flow. How, how is it going to displace water? What, what are your intents on that? You know, like uh, for rain and whatnot. Now you're still only covering like 27%, but. Uh, runoff. Runoff. Yeah. You you don't have to answer now, but just um, yeah, just that's one of the up. things. That's one of the criteria we look at um, in the hearing itself, or after the hearing when we have our discussion, um, is the any environmental impact. And with, with an addition like this, it can be things like runoff because um, you no longer have you have less ground to absorb water, so. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that? And where does the roof slant? Like, for instance, you're so close to the property line that, you know, drip lines would come into play here if it was the roof was slanted, uh, you know, from the pitch ran from the top point ran from east to west and it would pitch everything either towards the neighboring property or. Go ahead, you I know? believe that's the uh, that's the idea is that it would be pitched that way. So, yes, yeah, the the roof would slant towards the joint property. Right. So mm -hmm. you have to figure out how you're going to explain to us how all that water for the 18 feet that runs along that entire developed now area along that border where you're planning on displacing that water, especially with the type of storms we've been having. Yeah. Oh, my God. And again, it's just it's an environmental question with one of the criteria. It's five criteria that you have to go through for for a, a variance uh, analysis. Okay. And we will um, another one of the um, points we always look at in in our discussion is um, whether you have exhausted all alternatives to achieve your goal um, without needing a variance. Like, were there other um, were there other ways you could have built the addition 
or design the addition to achieve your goal uh, without needing a variance. Because everybody would love to have the bigger backyard, right? And uh, the idea of setbacks is to be fair to property owners from one side to the next, to know that people are not gonna build right to the line. Uh, and just looking at your site plan, um, it, it kind of on its face, the question arises of why the addition is not on the other side of the house instead of this side. So you'd just be ready to answer that. Like, why'd you put it on this side and not the other side? Because you okay. wouldn't need a variance on the other side. Yeah, that, that that's the thinking. You know, the idea is that they come up with these rules for a reason and 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 the state um, and, and the case law requirements are that you have to think what is the least impactful way of accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish. In this case, the main thing you're trying to accomplish is to get a bigger house. Mm -hmm. You're looking for more space. So the question is, are you doing it sort of at the expense, uh, because this is the way the zoning code looks at it, of the neighbor by building really close to the line. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't want them then building right up to your line, like within a foot. Uh, so you, this is how it plays out. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Okay. Um, remind me, does the overhang count as part of uh, and set into the off into the setback, or is it only um, the structure that it's over? It does not count, but there's like as long as it's within a certain distance, and okay. I, I'd have to look up the exact. That, that would be a. a a detail that would be good to provide is the amount of the overhang. It, uh, you can see it here. It does extend beyond what the current overhang is for the house. Mm -hmm. So knowing uh, exactly what the, the new overhang is. Yeah, we can look that up. There were issues about overhangs in the past. Yeah. I mean, especially, especially when it, mostly it's when structures are built right against the property line. Yeah, it can be relevant. Um, Because again, it's the same question that they put in the uh, the analysis is the environmental impact. Uh, you know, developing the property can have those impacts. Uh, you know, it become it can become a nuisance for the neighboring property, and, and that's just again, this is just the way they look. So the laws protect you, and if you're developing, they can work against you. Right. You know, again, against the the design that's in your mind most optimal for making the best use of your personal property to come at the expense of neighboring property. And that's what they're looking at and that's what the balancing is. Mm -hmm. Here it is, um, building projections, cornices or cantilevered roofs may project not more than three feet into a minimum setback area. Um, built courses, window sills and other ornamental features may project not more than six inches. And that's um so I think I think that's the reason why that's important to consider is that technically based on that read, I think the additional projection of the of the overhang into the setback actually increases the nonconformity into that setback even more than the ex expansion of the right. house, right? Because you're not just extending it back, there's also a slight extension out. Right. Um, could you please uh, the citation? Yeah, that was um, one one thirty four dash seventeen subsection um, yes the it looks like the subsection lettering got kind of messed up in this. This is a new code that was just passed earlier this year, and it's still a little okay. rough. But um, it's it's that that's a that section is just a couple of pages long, and it's a, a paragraph by itself that's called building projections. So it shouldn't be too hard to find. Okay. Is Jesse? Did you see where did you did you see the, uh, yeah, the projections? Yeah, on the, the new east elevation on A dash four B. I mean, it, it's hard to tell because there's no there's not numbers on it, but if you had to like ballpark it, you might say it projects eight inches beyond the current footprint of the of the roof line. Elevation, east elevation. Yeah, yeah, right. Huh. And the other thing, when you're looking at that, 
is uh, when we talked about runoff and everything. So the front part of the building, the the uh, top pitch will still. It'll be a corner there. Yeah, it'll be a corner. So yeah. you're not. What is the depth of the new, um, the new portion of the structure going to the rear? What is it about? Eight, you eight, mean eighteen feet? Eighteen feet. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, you know, I'm looking at the front of the building. The front building has um, the rainwater going to the front of the house and the back of the house, yeah. rather than yeah. all pitched to the to the neighbor side. So there's no, there's actually no pitch to the neighbor side on that part. On that house. portion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just pointing that out. Which makes it less complicated that you're throwing too much water over there. Right. But it does, there are potentially, you are getting runoff from both the extension roof and from the main roof. Because oh, yeah, it, because it, it, it comes it into comes, a, it comes a feed. Into, so yeah. um, you might think of a well or something, particularly down right at the corner where it meets. Yeah, I don't see a, um, a downspout planned here. I don't, I'm not a, a, a water person. I just like, that would be a water has become a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we have a lot of trouble with that. So. But, 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 you know, if you were within the setback or only encroaching two feet into the setback, it would seem less problematic but because you're so close to the property line it becomes much more of a concern for us to, you know, consider because. Sure. Okay. Um, I didn't have anything else. It looks in good shape. Um, we covered names of neighbors to be added to the list. Pick up sign. Um, I'll, I'll be sending you an email message about how to do the mailings, mm -hmm. um, which includes the notice. Um, op optional provide photographs at the hearing itself that will that will help board members understand the surroundings. Um, Can I just print those out like um, four by six mm -hmm. and bring them up? Yeah. yeah, and you only need one set of copies. We'll just pass it around. Mm -hmm. Okay. We I mean, can come to the house if you want, have it in the back. Well, yeah. sometimes we, we, we do, but we can't do it as a group because otherwise it's considered a meeting and it has to be put on notice. Okay. So, so, you know, a lot of times we go by individually just to take a look. Uh, the other thing I would recommend is not only, uh, you know, just take sort of just general pictures of the neighborhood so that we can get a, a, a spatial understanding of how the houses all sit on there. And it's just, it can be pretty much pro forma unless there's a big monstrosity of a house being considered. But again, it's just, we're, one of the questions is the character of the neighborhood mm -hmm. and whether uh, the new proposed structure is sort of less in conformity or general conformity with what's around. Mm -hmm. and, and again, that's more variable unless the house being considered is a monstrosity and working from one side to the other and eating up uh, in, in excess of the normal area space allowed coverage. But it just gives, you know, rather than just from your backyard and looking at the neighbors, it's just some kind of an overview. Sometimes people bring in what you almost have here, but it's on a, a very tight thing. They almost have a, a, a satellite imagery Okay. Uh, but confined really to like Constitution Drive that we can see. Sure, what the proposed. Shot, I mean, um, yeah, Google Maps. That That's would be great. actually what I've been looking at. That that would be always. That is always to me very very helpful mm -hmm. to, to see what the overall footprint design would be. And we we've all. I mean, we've always asked for that. You know, in the past, especially when you're you're building. Uh, structure or main structure out. But I don't have any other questions. Oh, good. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. All right. That's that's it. All right. Thank you all very yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you as well. And um, so I'll, I'll plan it's, it's 10 days in advance of the meeting. Right. The meeting, the that's so. the deadline for um the for postmark on the mailings and for posting the sign okay so i have that uh at the meeting 16. i have just the fifth just to be safe yeah yeah you it have, doesn't hurt you should yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it doesn't hurt to do it earlier yeah. no harm 
And the other thing is, it ha how, how has how's that all that information brought in as to the confirmation of uh, the mailing? I'll cover that in the message. Okay. Just um, okay. Okay. We'll, we'll need to see the receipts of the mailings. Okay. That's all. Okay. all right. well, thank you all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is review of the draft resolution for our last decision. Let's take a minute to look at yep. the, the draft. Can I ask you, uh, were we actually considering an area variance? Huh? Uh, that's what it is. Um, a fence height is. Oh, that's is, considered an area. Yeah, it's dimensional. Area is not the best term. Dimensional might be a better yeah, term. Yeah, I get it. I get Anything it. that involves dimension. I got it. I got you now. Okay. We're only allowed. There's, there's only two types, right? Use and and yeah. 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 Try to keep it simple. Yeah. But it's, yeah. It's it's okay if they just have two. That's that's fine. <laughs> Uh, thank you for preparing all that, mm -hmm. by the way. You're welcome. Okay, so we haven't put in a, the motion with... The, was made by and seconded by and so forth. Yeah. So once that's all on the minutes, right? No, this that would be the voting on this draft tonight. Oh, okay. Got so it. The, yeah, the draft is dated today, and we vote on it, and then whatever the vote is gets put in. Uh yeah. yeah. In the minutes or on the in this at the end. Yeah. So I, you know, I know we're on the screen, uh, but I. Oh, I see. I, there, there was discussion. And I don't know how much we get into it uh, with regards to the privacy issues and everything. Uh, we we probably I don't think we have to really do that. I mean, because most of this answers it, but that was the major uh, request. Oh, but right. I, you've sort of hinted at it. Privacy not being a, a sufficient criterion. Yeah. Um. Well. Um. It, but, but it, on top of that, the the other thing, with all due respect, that I heard from people who attended uh, the planning board meeting is that um, it was stated to be uh, the reason why they got what they got it was on the basis of when you had a commercial property you was usually a caretaker's house so they got approval for using a full print full print on, on the basis of a caretaker's house and that's and, and it was switched from commercial to residential and the main argument is that there would be no real traffic there well, and um, that's what was stated, and, you know, so that corroborates what somebody else said, um, you know, and, and which was different from what we were hearing. Mm -hmm. These are all issues that we, or objections that we raised and found in our discussions. Yes, I, I, I'm just... And they're I, more than sufficient, I think. So. I think what you have here is good. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, maybe, and we probably don't have to get to, because it basically just handles it, but... You know, sometimes if the fact that the, the main defense or uh, the, well, the, the argument for 
the height was privacy. Well, that is that's actually addressed. Not the word is not used, but the, but the, the the desired benefit is defined in terms of privacy. Two forms of privacy: deterring deterring curious pedestrians mm -hmm. and screening activities in the building. Those are both facets of privacy. I agree. Well, that I agree with that. Which so we, it, it's indirectly said. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, obviously, I wasn't here, so I, did, I didn't hear firsthand, but I read the the preliminary minutes from it, and I was curious whether or not the description of the use actually still falls under the live work use as defined in the new zoning. Given they said they have many full time workers that are there all the time. Um, well, None of that was um, documented, so it really has no reality. It wasn't in our record, number one. Well, the, yeah, no, no evidence was presented. I mean, like any board or any sure. judicial body, we have to rely on evidence, and they didn't present any, so it's really not a factual. Those aren't facts. However, however, I think it's important, and I'm sorry to interrupt, Eric, but that I think in the future, because it's a public record, and we're dealing with that property that I think in the future we come up with something that went under the planning board and and how the use was being made. And when you get arguments like that, which I think we'll anticipate easily, because often it's a privacy question, uh, that we look into what the planning board said some, about something, because it's public record. So mm -hmm. whether whether the fact that the parties who came before us did not introduce that, it, uh, we could simply uh, say, well, we're looking back to what was said at the planning board, and this is what was expressed to be the intent in order to get what you were given, meaning, you know, the type of use, what was anticipated. Because in, 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 in this particular case, there was a discrepancy mm -hmm. between what was said at the planning board and what was said before us. Yeah, I guess... Um... I guess they yeah. call it judicial notice. Hypothetically, when something's a public record, a board or uh, can take judicial notice of a public document okay. or statements that were on the record when it deals with the specific property. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you don't, we don't have to fly in the blind. But how would that have impacted? Oh, well, right away, we would have, I would have referenced right away in the planning board. We can see that the argument was that there would be no cars coming. There would be no curators coming. There would be no regular employees. There be, be there would be no, uh, you know, thirty group visitors mm -hmm. showing up. Okay. Well, we, we denied it anyway. So no, I'm just that's I, giving giving further. But what it would have made our job easier yeah. if we sat and listened to it a lot longer than we probably had to, because we could have gone right to the quick. Yeah, it's it be a burden to have to do that research before. No, I'm not putting it on you. I'll do it. I'll do it. It, it, it takes me to walk into the, the main uh, office here and just pull the statement on the uh, on the property. My question was meant to be. You do enough, by the way. More more educational on my on my side of understanding. If if things if if something services in in uh, either a workshop or in the actual hearing itself. That suggests that there is a there is actually not just an area variance, but a use variance happening. Mm -hmm. Or like, are we obligated to say to actually point it out to the code enforcement officer and say, based on what was said at this public hearing and it's in the public record, it appears that there's a use a, a, a violation of acceptable use, and therefore, um, I'm. You're going a little beyond what I feel confident. I mean, that's a kind of advanced question. Okay. Um, yeah. When inconsistencies arise, um, statements from an applicant contradict um, or seem to violate um, other uh, requirements. Um, what is the what is the effect? Well, there should be no there should be no problem that we share that information because number one, we didn't put that information out there. It was put out there by the applicant themselves. So they put it out there. Uh, 
And what we simply do is uh, share that information with the other responsible uh, boards or agencies, just, just so that everybody's on a board and there's not a, a sort of a, a a cutoff that that information can't get through. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why it cannot be mentioned. And what is done from that point forward, you know, it, you, right. you know, we, we might be able to say it in writing or anybody, but we'd have to be certain about what we heard. So mm -hmm. it all depends on the, the, the nature of what we heard and whether we would put in writing or simply pass it on by verbal understanding. And I mean, there, there have been several issues where Variants were, were sought here, and and we granted just so much, and certain things had to be done that were never done, mm -hmm. and things were looked at the other way. I, we get Donald McDonald and I, and we walked through the neighborhood, and we just sort of laugh. I mean, they come before us, and then they do what they want to do, mm -hmm. and then we're, we're not the code enforcement officers. Sure. We're asked to do one thing, make decisions, mm -hmm. yeah. but at the same time, if we hear certain things that may impact other things, there's no re and it comes from the applicant. There's no reason why we should pass it on to the people who could do something about it. Or at least they're responsible. And if they fail in their responsibility, that it's on them. And I would think that we would, oh, yeah. we would fail in our responsibility because we are in part, we're not, in, we, we are enforcement in part, but only on an oversight and appeals of uh, what is specifically brought before us. Uh, but it doesn't stop us from making mention of something i mean you know most people are doing things on a volunteer basis so you know you work together you're not trying to undermine anybody yeah. or anything yeah. but what we are trying to do as volunteers is to preserve the community the way it was intended to be preserved under the code yeah we, we you did take an oath so um Jesse, you emailed me a question about one of these codes. oh i did i was curious i uh this is probably just in unfamiliarity with some of the language but um my read of uh the second to last mm -hmm. whereas seemed uh at odds with in in effect with the other parts and I, and it could just be that specifically this uh notion of effect on the physical or environmental condition of the neighborhood is a thing that is a thing that I'm not entirely sure what that encapsulates. Um, you wouldn't be alone in that. It's I, it's a poorly written, that language comes straight from state law okay. and it's the law is poorly crafted. Okay. And it, it, it's not clear what it, how that differs from undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and detriment to nearby properties. I mean, they're all um, overlap and why, yeah. Um, but um, but th the intent here is to be limited to physical and environmental conditions, whatever that, however we, we can screw that. It's unclear. Okay. Um, so yeah, like we read that usually as things like um, uh, airflow, sunlight. Um, Obviously noise or, you know, okay, okay, things, okay. You know, you gotcha. know okay. rainfall, displacement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, impacts. The so energy. the previous whereas says there is that there that the, well, the, 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 the substantial. Yeah. Yeah. Just the the request is it a big request? Yes. <laughs> or is it a small request? That's that's again a kind of vague, but and but it's meant to be vague, and it, it's sort of vague, but not. It's fairly direct. See, a lot of times they came up with this five question test only about 10, 15 years ago, because boards didn't know where to start and where to end with their questioning to try to figure it out. So the uh, Court of Appeals stepped in, the state's highest court, and said, okay, we're going to go through this test analysis. And we're going to give, because they know, you know, most board members are not attorneys or anything like that. And even if you were an attorney, it doesn't mean that you would get the right answer. So they said, this is the path you walk down. That's what they did. Yeah, to try to... Impose some ob objectivity on the process. That's what, that's mm -hmm. that's the other thing. In structure, yeah. I mean, it's helpful. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we we've always been hung up on the question of substantiality. Is that numerical or is it yeah. is it in effect? Because you can have a small number with a big effect, mm -hmm. or a big number with a small effect. And how, you know what is substantial given those two sides of the coin? But it's also a kind of sense thing. So you can look at it with every factor that you're just mentioning. The, the discussions I've always read 
say, well, you should just stick to the numbers, you know, be objective, stick to the numbers, but that's not the numbers guy I can say that you can, you can be certain on a, uh, a number change, numeric change, but it can't tell you how important that, that number is. When, when you're talking about living environments, just how, you know, feet don't tell you anything. It's because there's so much else going on. Yeah, the zoning law is, is, is fairly interesting. It sounds sort of uh, obtuse, but, you know, and Eric has done this, I know, because I've heard him speak after we've had a conversation or two in a year or two in the past, but that you, when you go online and, you know, all the local agencies all have zoning boards and whatnot, and, you know, including even Phillips Town, and you look at what they're looking at and you hear what their their rationales are. And then the old, and then you would say, well, you know, they may have a different law, and they could. And so you look at what it, what is the verbiage in that law, but at the same time, they still have to go through the five criteria. So it gives you a way of understanding of how the uh, boards rationalize things out. It, and it's all understood that you know we're all volunteers and we're coming here just really with the mindset of the first thing we have to do is try to abide by the code as much as possible and grant the minimum variance that is really needed within the applicant's plan. You know, uh, with the conscientiousness of that we're trying not to be overly impactful on the remaining part of the neighboring area. And, and that's really what it comes down to. So I would advise going online and, uh, and you know, and just going and just reading it and seeing how they think. Yeah, I wish they had more of those available, um, or more kind of annotated discussions. It would be useful, but so, sometimes the state does that. Yeah, I've bought books online, which you can get pretty inexpensively, where you, you know, different zoning books, where you can hear and see how they analyze things. And, and, it, and all of it is just because in the end, you're analyzing. You know, you're not going to follow verbatim what they're doing. You're analyzing. Yeah. And you're seeing how they look at that. Yeah. Go ahead. So, Jesse, to answer your question, um, it, it is, in, in fact, that is, in fact, what happened, which is that we we thought the the um, undesirable effects on the neighbors mm -hmm. and the character of the neighborhood would be great, and yet the physical and environmental effects would be small or okay. minimal. Gotcha. And those are two different, yep. two different things, and whereas the, and the variance itself is substantial. Yeah. Okay. So I would move to approve the resolution that I've written. I don't see any need. I, I personally don't see any corrections or anything. I thank you for putting it together. I'll, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Unanimous. Um, now let's do a brief, I'll give you a brief presentation on the application form. We've been, the last couple of meetings, I've been referring to it and easing into this. Um, since we have the new code, our existing form is obsolete. So um, the, here are three pages as a starting point. Um, the first page is the new table of dimensional requirements. And this is like the master piece of um, information in the new code. Masterpiece. Isn't it? Yeah, it's a masterpiece. Masterpiece. <laughs> And um, it, in, a, in a single table, it gives you all the dimensions for each zone. And, um, and thank you for putting this together. <laughs> it was, um, and, and notice there are now three residential zones before there's primarily just R1. That was the predominant um, zone for most properties. Now RO and RN are about equal in number, and there are quite a few RLs as well. So page two is the Tate is the worksheet in the current, um, current application form. And it's just, it's tailored just for R1. So the pro among the problems here, besides the fact that it's confusing and has some errors, is that um, we, we can't just adopt this because we have three residential zones. I think we just get three different statements uh, that deal with it. Well, page three is what I'm suggesting and we can, take a different direction um it occurs to me why not just leave it up to the applicant um there's we're really only talking about a handful of features a handful of measurements so what i'm suggesting is a worksheet that works for any zone mm -hmm. they they start first line they, they write down their zone 
R, R O, R N, whatever. Then they circle whether they're talking about the principal building or the accessory an accessory structure. Then they go down to the table. First column is the key features, the setbacks, number of stories, height, lot coverage. Table, uh, second column B is they just copy, they look it up for themselves what they're supposed to comply with. Well, you know what's nice about that? They can better understand their own yeah. application when they show up the board. Yeah. And we're usually only going to be talking about a couple of numbers, like tonight. No, it's yeah. not, that, it's not that complicated. Um, so they, they fill in 20 feet, 10 feet, whatever. Um, then table C is their proposal, um, their proposed dimension. Mm -hmm. um, and then table D is the difference. I think that's really good because it gets them yeah. thinking about what they're asking for, how it differs from what's already there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's awesome. I think it's really good. Oh, good. Okay. You have the, it's easy. The, the, the listing of the, 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 the zoning. District that you're that you're that are is relevant. Uh, um, so let's uh, spend some time with this um, after the meeting, and if you if you, if you, have, if you have any insight, we'll we'll, we'll we'll let you know. See if um I mean, the key thing is kind of run some test cases against it and mm -hmm. see the, will this fail. Um, the the main one that just to throw out there is. This is this is for area variance only. Yes, but that's all the other one was for. And that okay. area variances are ninety eight percent. Sure, yeah, very rarely variance. use. Yeah. Uh, and that goes usually to the planning board. Right. They want to look at that first. Well, typically. that they, that's a change of use. That's oh, yeah. typically someone would go there and get a change of use versus getting a use because the the standards for getting a use variance are very high and difficult to achieve. Um, so this is predominantly what we're going to deal with. Yeah. And when it comes to a use variance, we'll, we'll be educated. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, it'll be different. Um, there, like, there was one use variance that came to us once they wanted to convert uh, their house, uh, their it were very sizable garage, two stories into a living residence. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line on that. Accessory apartment. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, you really can't have two livable structures on one lot, you know. Well, we allow accessory apartments now. Well, yeah, yeah, it's different. Now it's different. Yeah, back then it wasn't. I see. They have to sh to get a use variance. They have to show economically that they can't get a return on their property. Yeah, all kinds of te technical stuff. That right, but we haven't decided that. Typically, the planning board has yeah. taken uh, the the helm on that. Right, because it does impact the neighborhood and everything, and and, and it really does more go to planning in my estimation, when you talk about uses, right. except for special uses to be different, because that can, that's only by permit for one year, which has less of a, an impactful, uh, you know, going forward. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, Eric. No, I really didn't have anything. Um, the only, do you, um, do we want to make a reference to where they could look up the zoning to? Um, yeah, just say C, such and such. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, well, yeah, just say C, uh, code sections. Well, it's the map, actually. They, they mm -hmm. find it on the map. Yeah. Which is in the chapter 134, too. Yeah. You, so, and it's a subsection, the map itself? It's a bit. It's in that, the yeah, appendix at the end. The appendix. Okay, good. C, pen, C uh, it's also 134 yeah, appendix, yeah. yeah. You've been colorized for Matt. Thanks to Eric. It's been colorized for a long time. <laughs> That's just it. The colors keep changing. Yeah. <laughs> we tried really hard to put some textures in there. And, yeah. <laughs> Didn't quite work out. All right. So um, this is on the oh, really good. Okay. We'll revisit it. Revisit it at the next okay. meeting. See if I'll try to fill it out. Okay. So we look at the minutes. All right. Um, Eric and, and board members, just so I'm clear before we get to the minutes. The vote on the resolution. Um, John, you made the motion. And Marianne seconded. Marianne seconded. And all in favor. Okay. And I, I'm just, because I want to be clear, if Jesse wasn't here for the public hearing, is he abstaining? Or is because he was here for the workshop? Uh, he, I he should abstain. He can. Well, he, he he could watch the minute. He could have watched but the he minutes. Did. did you? He did. He, oh, did you watch it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Okay. Yeah, 
Well, I think a note yeah. should be made to that effect in the minutes. Okay. okay. Yeah, that makes it's just to. I mean, potentially could be an objection. So yeah, it, make it clear in the minutes that Jesse had attested that he watched the minutes. Yeah. But and also attended the workshop. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it, it exactly. just makes it a little bit more complete. Okay. Then. Well, the vote it was a majority. With even without, even if he, if he abstained, it's the same. It was yeah. still a majority, but I think this is a good exercise in yeah. stating what we're stating. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks. Really good. Thank you. Um. So to two minutes. Okay. Uh, the first is September seventh. Let's let's read. Okay, this. I was not there. I don't think for that. So, okay. and Jesse, I guess you were here, and Marianne mm -hmm. for the seventh. Yes. John was staying. Doesn't hurt. There's one sentence I would sort of massage a little um, halfway down on page one um, under the bulleted list, the second sentence beginning applicant therefore seeks a variance. I would just have that go on to say uh, seeks a variance to increase the height of the portion of the fence in the property side yard to six feet so that it matches the six foot fence allowable in a rear yard. Get all that, uh, Karen? I, I'll, 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 I have it noted here, so I'll, oh, okay. that's okay. I, I will just I, I, that sounds right. That. that sounds just just a quick kind of clean yeah. up the language, make it a little more clear. And it's also clear, really. It, yeah. it, you know, visually. And, and then at the top of page two, since the, the key point of a workshop is to determine whether the application is ready, I think we should always state that um, and Therefore, I would start this paragraph, the one that now begins be worth explained. I would start it with the board deemed the application ready for a public hearing. Be worth explained, um, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. so I will put that in if that's okay. Okay. You want me to make the changes there? Well, I've already yes. got them typed in in my copy, so I'll just send you a okay. final with the signature. If so it can be approved with the notion as amended. That, as amended. As amended, yeah. If somebody wants to move, we do that. Uh, and if we approve the minutes as amended. The minutes of September, September 7th, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. I abstain. And the next is October 5th.
interesting use of the word rehabilitating. Hmm. The, the full tear down, right? Where's that? Uh, we're describing how Ms. M. Peterson noted it would describe the application. Uh, that applicant Nina Abney LLC had been rehabilitating 37 Fair Street for several years. It was not torn down. Oh, was it? No, she kept it basically the shell. Oh, okay. That is it. Yeah, there was a lot of cinder block that was kept. So, if, you know, that, that comes down to another whole argument. Gotcha. But uh, they, they did preserve, because uh, it, it was pretty well built, mm. as it was. They really just sort of got it, like, I've walked inside of it, you know, when they were in the middle of, I've had, I had so many materials delivered to my house that were meant for that property for construction. <laughs> I kept saying, hey, guys, if you're looking for these materials down here, and, and they something on your property. See what we're building. I walked in there. Massive. Wow. Massive. It's just beautiful. Would you live on fair? Yeah. Oh, we're neighbors. Yeah. I'm on 13, at 13th fair. I'm at 60. I'm right across from the Mayor Street, uh, Mayor's Parking, uh, oh. Mayor's, uh, what do you call it? Field uh, yeah. entrance gate. The, the flat roof house. It's smaller. Gotcha. Great name, uh, the Springbrook uh, president has. Uh, Robert Plant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> D. Robert Plant. D. Robert Plant. Yeah. Yeah, Robert Plant also sort of recall that he was not particularly opposed to the foot fence. His comments were ambiguous. He was like, you know, mm -hmm. on this hand, but on the other hand. I think he was trying to be good. Ambivalent may be a better word. Yeah. Um, but I, th I think I remember, for that reason, didn't I deliberately actually say to him, so do you oppose it? And he said, yes. <laughs> So I tried to get him nail him down on you, that. You, you did, you did, uh, uh, yes. And that that'll be that's right there in the video. He he definitely said um, serious. Can use the phrase serious concerns. Something like one could have serious concerns about this fence. So um, it was there. His I think his underlying purpose was there, it just was couched very politely. Especially when you're living across the street. Yeah. Almost done. Boy, in five minutes. Bye. <laughs> on page one, under the heading public hearing, it says workshop on. So that's not that's not accurate. So I'll just no. delete that and start with application for a variance.
Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, this is all just, and, and everybody wants to keep them in shorter. I'm looking at the, the second page, like third sentence down, like using the port, porta potty. I mean, to, I would say like the workers porta potty was it at the rear of the property. So I, I think the suggestion that people were really walking across the property. Oh, yeah. You know, I because I, I, I've walked by there and the porta potty is a little bit set back. Mm -hmm. And I think it was done really for the neighbors to the north that they didn't see the porta potty like right, right, at, right alongside the house. So I would say using the workers apostrophe, that's mm -hmm. apostrophe, mm -hmm. porta potty at the rear of the property, comma, and then everything else the same. Uh, and then the, the comment midway down on that second page uh, regarding uh, Steve Rust, who is the next door neighbor uh, where his mom also lives, uh, right at the last sentence, he noted that the Riverview restaurant on the opposite side of his residence does not have a fence and 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 has truck truck traffic. So he was basically saying it doesn't have a fence, but he was trying to also point out uh you know and it does have truck traffic but we don't really need want a fence there uh, so because the argument is which was pointed out even down in the, the two paragraphs just below that was that uh, the um, council for the applicant had stated right in that last paragraph uh just above where it says board comment that last par paragraph sentence, it says she further knows the building is not only a residence, but a fully functioning commercial business with full time employees, which is exactly like Marie Early walked across the street from me, across 9D the other day, seeing me walking out of the library to say, I watched everything. Oh, this, this was completely the opposite of what they thought. Oh. And, and specifically as to this kind of this sentence here. Hmm. That, 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 that all that was stated to be, uh, you know, not the case, that it would be just really a residential property with very little uh, traffic. Yeah, well, um, what matters is what actually happens. Yeah. What actually goes on. It's, um, John, where, what was the previous one about the um, truck traffic? I don't see. Yeah, right at the uh, end where it says uh, Steve Rust, oh, uh, yeah. right at the bottom. And, and, it, and then after the comma and right at the last sentence, uh, second part of the last sentence, he noted the review restaurant on the opposite side of his residence does not have a fence and has truck, truck traffic. So his, his suggestion was we have truck traffic. But I don't see that point at that spot. It's, oh, it's at the end of the third paragraph in public comment. On oh, the second page. I, a, I wonder if I have a... Maybe I don't have the, the up-to-date Here, draft. take a look. Um, I put it right, and he wrote it. Yeah, um, I don't have that. So what there. his point yeah. was, which really... Yeah, maybe I have it here. Yeah, his point was, which would be okay. validated, the argument was being made on the applicant's part that we have truck traffic. We want we want to protect you from having to see that. And he goes, don't worry about it. I already got truck <laughs> traffic right on my north side with yeah. the Riverview restaurant, restaurant, and I don't need a six-foot fence. Yeah. That's the point. And I'm sure that I, I know there's a lot more truck traffic uh uh, you know, at the Riverview than there would be at the applicant's address. And even 20 to 30 feet down from there, at the most, there's significant truck traffic going in and out of the depot area, yeah. oh, which yeah. which is all incredibly visible to uh, the neighbor uh, because it's all down sloping. And that's all they would see is trucks going by unless they threw up a six foot fence. But they don't believe in six foot fences. They believe in more of the view shed. Yeah. So they're like, we'll tolerate. Look, I live across from the sewer treatment plants. <laughs> that says it all right there. I didn't put up any six foot. Yeah, right? you turn your head a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I got a, that's why I got a crick in my neck. <laughs> I'm always looking north. <sighs> 
somebody once said, I, I put a, and the funny thing is it's still there. It's a joke because it's not operated for over five or six years. They go, why the hell did you put a TV set in the southwest corner of the window of that bay window that overlooks mm -hmm. all the Hudson Highlands? And I said, so I didn't have to see the sewer treatment <laughs> right in that corner. <laughs> and, that, and that Sony tube TV yeah. is still in yeah. that corner. Who has a tube TV? <laughs> I couldn't possibly get rid of it if I tried now. Well, I think they're hard to lift, too. Oh, the last, I had two of them. One of them, we had to like push down. We had to wait till it snowed to push it down the slope. Does anyone have any other changes? No. They look good. Uh, Eric, thank you for doing everything. I move that we uh, approve the minutes. The minutes of October I'll second it. as as amended. As amended. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, except for the extension. Yeah. So what we are going to keep? What are we going to keep here? We're going to keep uh, the new draft here, right? So pull that over. And I guess Karen, you'll keep the application. Oh, this application will be needed. All right. And Karen, thank you for putting everything together. Oh, and thank you for saving my iPad. I walked out without it the other day. Oh, wow. I, I, I must have been in a huge hurry. Yeah, it seems, I'm just wondering now, going back to the resolution. Yeah. Um, if you watch the entire thing, is he eligible then to not have to abstain on the minutes? Or, well, uh, or, well there were other things discussed. Yes. At the minutes that maybe. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter either way. So we approved them. But yeah, and we also had we also that. we okay. also had a uh, uh, a quorum. Right. Right. And we have a quorum okay. now. To approve. It's better to be conservative and and not in those things. Yeah. I just don't know the law on that. Uh, interesting. We'll, we'll check that out. I'll, I mean, if if we're worried about it. Well, no, I think if you watch the video, yeah. I, I think to, you watch the hearing part. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So Eric, Eric sent it to me afterwards. Okay, that's fine. You have to have watched yeah. every minute of it. Yeah. The same. That's fine. Just want to make sure we're doing it correctly. So, Eric, you're going to make those changes yes. and then send it to me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any other business? Yeah. Um, Let's go out and party. <laughs> okay. okay. No. no. Okay. I, I got that friend calling me. And then I, he's he's got to go work tonight, so I got to get. Move that we uh, end the meeting. I, I second that. All in favor. <laughs> all, all in favor. Aye. Thank you for everything, yeah. Eric. Really, seriously. Thanks. And there's a lot of work there, and I'll I'll do the investigation on any properties that have seemingly have issues that go back. Long term to, properties, yeah, that had previous approvals. Yeah, so. I'll do that. So. That I, they said, oh, you want to be chairman of it? I said, no way. <laughs> I've only been on the board about 17 years, and it, it, it's work. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Is there I any way you can it. delegate any of these? Well, you know, I think it's so much, really. I mean, yeah. At, at, at times, think about right. it. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that, not just as a as a, a, a work burden relief, but as a, I mean, there is value in socializing what's actually required to produce these documents. and. Mm. I would learn a lot yeah. if I, if I needed to do something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. You know, I, I would learn. I'm president of Little Sunny Point Board, mm -hmm. and the prior president was like my brother, <laughs> smart kid. But he did everything. He, he was like a one man 